This is the book of Isaiah chapter 32 verse 7. The instruments also of the chul are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. But the liberal deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kodash, double honors to my apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone, who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you here with another lesson. Uh, just kind of click the button. I don't really have precepts. Um, I saw these two videos and uh, wanted to just see if I can make a lesson out of it. Uh, yesterday I saw Elder Possum Tahar. He put up a video. Uh, I think the brother. Um, the brother uh, Kazak, Shalom to you bros out in Mississippi, you know, GMS Mississippi, you know, he did a video on can you uh, make it mandatory the RFID, all right, micro C hip. And um, I wanted to, uh, saw these two videos and I thought of those videos, right? I thought of that video. And uh, whether it's mandatory or not, the point is, like the brother said in his video, you know, why is these, uh, why is this a, a, a concern? All right, because it's Bible prophecy. Us of the whole four elect who believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai understand Bible prophecy, and we know that the Lord is going to bring it to pass. All right, which takes us to Revelation 13 16. He calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in his right hand or in his forehead and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark and that word mark goes into the Greek word karagma all right which means something incision something brand all right which is that device that goes underneath the skin all right so you know I'm gonna play two videos that I got I may play a third video that I'm thinking of that you brothers already seen before you know, since I'm talking about the micro C hip. And yeah, I'll probably play that video as well. But I'm going to play these two videos. You know, basically this video here, all right, with this guy. He uh, basically telling you about these cell phones. And what's the real use of these cell phones. And I only draw the conclusion that I understand now. Well, we understood. But it just hit me that why they want to put... You know what's in these cell phones which is that micro c hit inside of you because you don't take your phone with you everywhere you can lose it you know you might not take it with you in the bathroom you might not take it with you when you go run to the store you know so therefore they don't have no access to you except for the cameras that's around but these cell phones are tracking you all right and they're spying on you and this is something we all know but he going within a couple of minutes only a minute he gonna break it down to you and see and tell you how these cell phones and how they can go inside these phones and they can draw up everything that you've done in the phone, you know. And that's why he said that toward the end of this video, he says this is why these companies lock up these uh, these devices because they don't want you to get into it and figure these things out. So anyway, without further ado, let's play this video. Exactly how we do this. Now I'll probably lose my uh, my admission to the uh, world hackers community. However, I want to tell you. These devices are computers, whether it's an Android phone, an iOS phone or whatever. Inside is a processor, which is a computer. The instruction set, which is the iOS and all the applications that you run and the memory in which you store your data. You need a hardware engineer and a software engineer. The hardware engineer takes the phone apart and it copies the instruction set, which is the iOS and applications and your memory. And then you run a piece of a program called a disassembler, which takes all the ones and zeros and gives you readable instructions. Then the coder sits down and he reads through. And what he's looking for is the first access to the keypad, because that's the first thing you're doing when you input your pad. It'll take half an hour. When you see that, then he reads the instructions for where in memory this secret code is stored. It is that trivial. 
a half an hour. The FBI knows this. Apple knows this. And this is not an indictment of Apple. Any computer, and this is a computer, any computer that falls into someone's hands, well, anybody can do it, which is why corporate data centers keep their computers locked up. Right. All right, so, you know, there you go. You heard it, man. All right, you got uh, these chips, and these chips is uh, very important to these devils because it's data, it's information, all right? So just imagine though they put in this micro C-hip inside of you and they can track you, you know, and they can, you know, get data from you 24-7. You know, you won't make a mistake to leave your C-hip, uh, uh, you know, around. You know, it will be in you. Everywhere you go, it will be with you. You know? So anyway, let's move on. Now buy something without a phone. Now check this out, which is a video we saw countless times through other people. But this is way, this is their way of the gradualism and conditioning. You know, you're paying for things with the palm of your hand. In New York City, you can now buy something without a phone, a credit card, cash, anything. You enter the store with your palm. You can register your palm once at any Whole Foods, and they will pair your palm to your credit card. Once you grab an item, the store uses weight sensors to know something was taken, combines it with camera technology to know that it was you, and charges you as you walk out the store. No staff, no cards, no cash. That's quick. In New York City, you can now buy something without a phone, a credit card, cash, anything. You enter the store with your palm. You can register your palm once at any Whole Foods, and they will pair your palm to your credit card. Once you grab an item, the store uses weight sensors to know something was taken, combines it with camera technology to know that it was you, and charges you as you walk out the store. No staff, no cards, no cash. You'll do it, you know, and your kids will be well ahead of you. Alright, so just moving on to the next video. You know, that was super quick, but y'all brother seen it. And um I want to bring out a scripture. And this is uh what I read earlier in Isaiah 32. All right, this is uh, Isaiah 32. I'm going to start at verse 4. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. The vow person shall be no more called liberal, nor the chul said to the bountiful. All right, now when you look the word chul up in Google, the word chul. It means mean, impolite, spirited person, low birth, miser. So this should, this is the nature of Edom, right? The vow person shall no shall be no more called liberal, nor the chul said to the bountiful. For the vow person will speak villainly, and his heart will work iniquity, to practice hypocrisy, and to utter error against Yahweh to make empty the soul of the hungry and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail so the purpose of these devils is to cause error to the most high all right and that's you know ba basically you know as one guy said in many videos ago sticking their thumbs in god's face they want to cause error all right they want to make the most high to not be perfect and everything here that exists is perfect. It's just some things are out of order. All right? But it's perfect. All right? The earth itself is perfect. When the Lord created the animals, they were perfect. When he created us, we were perfect. All right? But the things that are out of order is you Israelites, the Lord's chosen people. And the Lord is going to set things in order. All right? So it says, the vile person will speak villainly. And his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against Yahweh to make empty the soul of the hungry and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Now I want to read the uh, ESV version in Isaiah 32 and 6. It says, 
For the foul speaks folly and his heart is busy with iniquity to practice ungodliness, to utter error concerning Yahweh, to leave the craving of the hungry unsatisfied and to deprive the thirsty to drink. All right, because the devil, you know, he's always lying. This devil is always lying, man. All right, he's always causing confusion. So when you need, like, and I'm thinking about uh, health because a lot of uh, information from these devils is lies and you can actually go and heal yourself through the Lord, right? By tapping back into the foods, eating organic foods. This is why our food's been tampered with. This is why, you know, the ways of healing is being taken away because this devil is causing error, all right? He's causing error, right? Which is through his lies and confusions. So verse seven, the, the instruments also or tool are evil, which is his devices, all right? That he creates. It says, he deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speak it right. Now this is the ESV version for Isaiah 32 and seven. As for the scandal, his devices are evil, he plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the even when the plea of the needy is right. And that's this devil. That's why he is the wicked. The most high created him to be the wicked. Alright? Because even when the needy do speak right and plead for right righteousness, he still will give you confusion and lies. Death. He's the wicked, man. Alright? And it's a it's a must that you you know that this is important that you know who is the wicked that the Bible speaks of. All right. Scriptures say that, um, we're not ignorant to Satan devices. You don't want to be ignorant to his wicked devices that he devised, that he put in motion, that he creates. All right. So without further ado, let's play this video. What CBDC and digital IDs and vaccine passports will do is they will snap into place a fourth fence. And when that fence snaps into place, we are locked down financially and digitally. I call it digital concentration camps. This technology can turn our homes, our cars, and our communities literally into digital concentration camps. When I say that, people don't believe that the vision is this dark, but I want to show you three videos to give you a sense of what this feels like. The first video is Augustine Carsons, who is the head of, he's the general manager of the Bank of International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland. Who here knows who the BIS is? So this is the central bank of central banks. 63 central banks are members of the BIS from Basel, Switzerland. The rarest thing in the world is to see a central bank tell you the a banker tell you the truth. Now you're going to get to see a central banker tell you the truth. A very rare moment. We tend to establish the equivalence with cash. Uh, and there is a huge difference there. Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who's using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Uh, the, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also we will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely important and that makes a huge difference with respect to what, uh, to what cash is. This is Richard Werner, the top academic scholar in the world on central banking. He wrote the book and did the documentary, The Princes of the Yen, about the Japanese central bank. Here he is in Malmo, Sweden, in May. The nature of the CBDC, what, what is it actually going to look like? They never talk about that. Um, but I heard one European central banker tell me what it's going to look like. He saw it. He was invited to one of the old central banks in Europe that are very much promoting this. 
and they showed him and you know he's he's a pop um you know executive director of another central bank in europe and there's no reason to believe that he was telling me a story um and he was around this this large and would be implanted under your skin so you heard it man all right and um i want to read this you know i got a couple of got a compilation of clips here about the motb but i'm gonna leave it at that i'm gonna make this lesson short i hope you got something from the lesson that builds upon your faith toward yahweh yahweh shai all right yahweh bahashim yahweh shai right so i'm gonna end with this scripture here in fact something up there this is revelations chapter 15 verse 1 right and i'll advise to go read revelations 13 16 on down get into the word mark i will advise to go read revelations 14 8 and 9 and 10 all right which deals with this motb right the mark which is the same mark in revelations 13 16 I will also go and uh, advise to read Revelations 15, which deals with the mark that's written in Revelations 13, 16. Now, the the mark, the word mark written in Ezekiel 9, 4 through 6 is a different mark. It's not the same meaning as the mark in Revelations 13, 16. How do we know that? By doing research. When you look up the word mark in Ezekiel 9, 4 through 6, that, that word there goes into a Hebrew word which the Hebrew word is uh, thawa, all right, which means exempt from judgment, all right, exempt from judgment. Right, so I'm going to read Revelations 15 and 1 because we understand that those of the Lord's elect are not going to receive the mark. Now, also too, Revelations 3 and 10. All right, the hour of, of temptation. Yahweh Shai said, because you have kept my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation, which he's talking about his sheep, his lost sheep, right? Which is the elect. He's going to make sure that they don't receive that mark. All right, because he's going to be with them. All right, and they're going to be delivered. So we're going to read Revelations 15 and 1. And I saw another angel, uh, excuse me, and I saw another sign in heaven great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled up the wrath of the most high and i saw right you know because when you read revelation 7 it talks about how the lord has the angels holding back the wind which that wind represents destruction and that destruction is coming upon babylon the great all right and all like apostle tahar also mentioned a little bit earlier in one of his videos about israel you know, these places got to be destroyed. But America, which is known as Babylon, the great in the scriptures, it ain't no coming back. This place is going to be devastated. The land laid desolate, man. All right. When no man can inhabit in this place. See, Israel is going to be destroyed, but it's going to be built back up. All right. So when you read Revelation 7, the Lord is having the angels to hold back the destruction until he's still in the foreheads of his elect for them to be delivered. So he's holding back the destruction until the elect gets sealed. You know, that's heavy, man. That's heavy. And, and I'm thinking about Yahweh Shai when he mentioned in Matthew 24, he said, when this truth shall go across the face of the earth, then shall the end come. And we know that this truth, this gospel is across the face of the earth. So we, we that close. And then you got the prophecies, you got World War Three brewing, you know, this year 20 well let me say the coming days because it's going to be 2024 all right and you know yesterday elder pastor Har also did a video on um just just a quick video speaking a little bit what 2024 may look like and we we a hey, we of the whole four elect looking for the lord fulfilled prophecy to finish these prophecies up man it don't look good for this place. This place is on its way out. Scriptures say, take bond for her pain if she may be healed. There is no medicine and no ointment that can heal Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. This place this place is done. All right? So that means, according to 2nd Edger 6, Esau is the end of the world, 
and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So our kingdom is literally next. Okay. Meanwhile, you got these devils striving to extend their kingdomship and going under the face of Moab. But that's not going to happen. And then also the new God will be technology, AI, which they call alien invasion. We call it artificial intelligence. You know, you devils are not going to go unpunished. All right. For what you did. Moab is not about to rule the world and be the face of of this world of this world the earth wasn't given to him the earth was given into the hands of the wicked so the lord's going to remove the wicked and then what's up next is jacob's kingdom which is the kingdom of heaven see this whole thing is all about jacob and esau when you really look at it and you read the book it's about jacob and esau all right the lord have chosen jacob and he have hated esau all right because that's what it boils down to these two nations are the biggest characters of the lord's movie Esau, Jacob, older brother, younger brother. All right. So anyway, this is Revelations 15 and one. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled up the wrath of the most high. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mangled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image. And over his mark and over the number of his name stand on a sea of glass having the harps of the most high. So John, he saw what? He said, I have, it says, and them that had gotten a victory. Who was them? The elect. He said the victory over the beast, all right, which is NATO. Okay. North Atlantic Treaty Organization, all these European countries banding together. All right. The beast, right? Uh, it says, and over his image, right? Which is image represents the system. And over his mark, which goes into Karagma. Matter of fact, I just want to do something just so I make sure I'm correct. I know I'm correct, but let's just see because I never thought to look it up. The word mark here in Revelation 15 and 2. So the word mark here in 15 and 2 is Karagma exactly all right so it says have gotten a victory over the beast over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of the most high right and they sung the song of moses the servant of the most high and the song of the lamb saying great and marvelous are thy works lord god almighty just and true are thy ways Thou king of saints, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thou judgments are made manifest. Man, because when the Lord do this, it's going to be devastating. And it's going to be known there's only one true power. All right. And that's Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, there's only one true God. Okay, Heavenly Father, his name is Yahweh. There's only one true power. In the Hebrew, yes, the word power means Allah, but that's not the Heavenly Father's name. That's just, you know, a word, a title, you want to say. Power. You know, a brother could call himself power. He can call himself Allah. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's just power. But what is his name? What is the son name? If thou can tell, there's only one true power and both of them. And let me say the father and the son are on one accord, two different entities, but on one accord. All right. So it's one power, man. All right. And we're hopefully a, hey, I hope to be a part of that, that election. The Lord's elect is also on one accord. All right. With Yahweh, why Yahweh shot, man. And I say Yahweh, why? Yahweh Shai, the Y means and in the Hebrew. So I'm saying Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, if you didn't know. So it says, Who shall fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thou judgments are made manifest. So when the Heavenly Father bring forth this great judgment, oh yes, it's going to be manifest. All right? 
It's, it's going to be well known. No more confusion. No more lies. Everyone in the earth is going to know the truth. And they're going to know who the true saints are according to the Bible. They're going to know who the God of Israel is for. And that's for his people. All right. Which are you so-called Negroes. You so-called Hispanics, Latinos. You so-called Mexicans. You so-called West Indians. You so-called Haitians. All right. The 12 tribes. You are the Lord's chosen people. And the Most High going to make sure he, he, he let the world know that. All right. You know, let me say after he bring his destruction or at the same time. Because he's going to deliver these men. He's going to deliver some of those women. All right. The one third, I should say. It's going to be a lot of women. You know, it's going to be a lot of women. Because you're going you're gonna to have 12,000 of men of each tribe, which is the 144. And these brothers are going to have women. All right. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of women. But also, don't, don't get it twisted. A lot of you wicked women are going to be destroyed, too. All right. Because the Lord said two thirds, two thirds of his people shall cut off and die. All right. Shall be cut off. And that two-third number is bigger than one-third, all right? And he's talking about his nation, so you, you know, let it wrap around your brain, all right? And you do the math. Verse 5, and after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open, and the seventh angel came out of the temple, having seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their, their breasts girded with golden girdles you know and that's basically the point i just wanted uh the victory over the image the beast and the mark you know so let me say kwami asha allah uh call halal la yahawa bahashem yahawashai which means all praises to the father yahawa and the name of his son yahawashai i also want to give double honors to my apostles and elder bishops of great millstone who rule well and salutations to the Lord's whole four legs scattered abroad. Shalom.